Hi, I'm Steve Hendricks. Today I want to tell you about one of the more exciting findings from my book on fasting, The Oldest Cure in the World. It's about how fasting can slow or even reverse the supposedly irreversible disease of rheumatoid arthritis. RA, as some of you know, is an autoimmune disorder in which the body attacks the linings of its own joints and literally cripples the sufferer. Conventional medicine doesn't have a cure, just drugs that somewhat slow the terrible decline. But during the 20th century, there were fasting doctors like Herbert Shelton in the United States and Otto Buchinger in Germany, who reported that fasts of a few or several weeks could slow or even reverse RA. Not until the late 1970s, though, did scientists, all of them in Scandinavia, finally look into the question. In one of their studies, volunteers made a short fast of just 7 to 10 days, then ate a vegetarian diet for 9 weeks, and about a third of them not only had less pain and stiffness, but needed fewer painkillers. That was pretty interesting, so a second study was done, and it found that during a fast of 7 days, the joints of RA patients were less tender and less inflamed. You can see that in the lower two lines of this graph compared to the upper two lines, which are for the non-fasting controls. The fasters in this study also enjoyed a drop in their red blood cell sedimentation rate, which is a marker of body-wide inflammation. When the researchers looked into the mechanisms behind these improvements, they discovered that the fasters' neutrophils, which are white blood cells that fight infection, got better at killing certain bacteria. The dark lower two lines on the graph show how bacterial populations fell when they were attacked by the neutrophils of the fasters compared to the top two lines for the non-fasting controls. Now this was interesting because researchers think rheumatoid arthritis may be caused in part by neutrophils that act up and attack the body. So what did it mean for RA that fasting made neutrophils better at killing bacteria? A third study set out to answer this question, and it found that when sufferers of RA did a week-long fast, their overactive neutrophils seemed to calm down. One sign of this calming was that the neutrophils released less of an enzyme called lysozyme. Usually lysozyme is good for us. It's part of the artillery that our immune system uses to batter down the cell walls of harmful bacteria. But in RA patients, an excess of lysozyme may be part of what's damaging their joints. What's interesting here is that fasting, according to these two studies, turned down the harmful self-destructive effects of neutrophils, yet turned up the neutrophils' helpful disease-fighting effects. Fasting was acting like some kind of dream steroid that dialed down the autoimmune response of the immune system, but without dampening, the way real steroids do, the immune system's ability to fight off intruders. Not coincidentally, the patients in this study also had less morning stiffness, less tenderness, and less inflammation. Okay, so this was all really promising stuff. But these Scandinavian studies between 1979 and 1988 were all small and were either uncontrolled or only modestly controlled, and conventional doctors almost entirely ignored them. But since other treatments for RA were so ineffective, And since these studies were so radiant with promise, another group of Scandinavian researchers put together a larger, better controlled trial. A doctor in Oslo named Jens Kjeldsen Kra agreed to lead the experiment, and he must have been awfully glad he did because in 1991, its results landed in one of the world's most prestigious medical journals, The Lancet. Kjeldsen Kra's team took 53 people with rheumatoid arthritis and divided them into two groups. For the first month, one of the groups went to a health farm while the other went to a convalescent home. After that, both groups finished the rest of the year-long trial at their own homes. The group that was sent to the health farm did a modified fast of 7 to 10 days. Every day, they slurped down 200 to 300 calories of thin broths, which was just enough to give them a little energy, but not so many calories as to pull them out of ketosis, which is the fat-burning state that's the hallmark of a fasting metabolism. After their 7-10 to day fasts, for the next three and a half months, they ate a vegan diet, and after that, for the rest of the year, a vegetarian diet. Meanwhile, the group that was sent to the rest home for a month ate normally, both while they were at the rest home and for the remainder of the year at their own homes. Their diet was a standard Western diet with a lot of meat, dairy, eggs, refined grains, and other processed food. Just four weeks into the study, The fasting and vegan group had improved on nearly every measure of arthritis that the researchers checked. Number of swollen joints, number of tender joints, degree of tenderness, duration of morning stiffness, 
grip strength, overall pain, and levels of inflammatory markers like red blood cell sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein, and white blood cell count. At the end of the year, the fasting vegan vegetarian group still maintained nearly all of these gains. They were also in better overall health than before the trial, and they lost an average of 9 pounds. Meanwhile, the control group also enjoyed less overall pain during their month at the rest home, but they didn't do nearly as well on other markers, and their small improvements quickly disappeared once they left the rest home. Eleven months later, at the end of the trial, they were in more pain than they had been in beforehand, and on nearly every other metric, including their own assessment of their health, they had badly deteriorated. In other words, their disease took the usual sad course. Now, why did the fasters do so well? Their fasts were clearly important, as we saw in the mechanistic discussion earlier, but the vegan diet was probably just as essential. We suspect this from a later trial in which RA patients fasted for 7 to 10 days, then ate a Mediterranean diet that had plenty of animal products, and their rheumatoid arthritis hardly improved at all. So, going back to Kjeldsen Kraus' 1991 study, the contrast between the fasting group and control group could not have been sharper, and the placement of the results in The Lancet could not have been better. But almost no one paid attention. No rheumatologist canceled the appointments of his RA patients and packed them off to fasting clinics. No rheumatology association suggested the standard of care for RA be changed to put fasting at the top of the list. Just to recap what it was that everyone was ignoring, a single fast of a modest length just 7 to 10 days, followed by a diet rich in plants, substantially slowed or even reversed a supposedly intractable, irreversible disease. Better still, this therapy had no harmful side effects, just good ones like healthy weight loss. The only other treatment the doctors had, remember, the one that they were using all the time, was RA drugs that weren't nearly as good at slowing the disease, let alone reversing it, and they were dangerous. The leading drug today for RA is methotrexate, and its common side effects include bleeding gums and mouth sores, nausea, stomach pain, bloody vomiting and diarrhea, rapid heartbeat, swelling of the face, hands, and feet, and trouble breathing. Its less common, but not unheard of, side effects include seizures, loss of voice, and loss of consciousness. Given these ghastly side effects, someone's going to have to explain to me why almost no doctors today are advising their RA patients to consider a fast under medical supervision. It mystifies me that doctors are even allowed to prescribe methotrexate without even telling RA patients that fasting has been shown to be an effective alternative in randomized controlled trials published in respected, peer-reviewed journals. Unfortunately, scientists haven't done much better than doctors. In the three decades since Kjeldts and Kraus' Lancet study, almost no researchers have pursued the obvious follow-up questions. Like, if a single fast of just 7 to 10 days followed by a vegan diet can do this much good, what might a fast of 7 to 10 days every 3 months do? Or how about a longer fast, say 14 days, or 28, or even 40 days, the kind of extended, medically supervised fast that doctors have been prescribing for more than a century for all kinds of disorders, including autoimmune diseases like RA. But it's not all bad news. The good news is, if you or someone you care about suffers from rheumatoid arthritis, there may be hope through fasting and dietary change. You don't need to wait for more research to see if fasting under su medical supervision can help. Let me emphasize, however, under medical supervision. The fasting doctors who I interviewed have differing opinions about whether healthy people can fast for a short time without medical supervision. Some say yes, some say no. But all of the doctors I talked to agreed that if you aren't healthy, if you have a disorder, even something as supposedly minor as mild high blood pressure, let alone something major like rheumatoid arthritis, or if you're taking medications of any kind, or if you even suspect you might have a health problem, then you shouldn't fast for longer than 18 hours on your own. On my website, stevehendricks.org, you can find a short list of clinics with doctors experienced in supervising fasts, including for patients with autoimmune diseases like RA. And if you're interested in learning about healthy dietary change, which you can do anytime, I recommend the work of Dr. Michael Greger, Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Neil Bernard, nutritionist Brenda Davis, or nutritionist Simon Hill. Finally, 
I want to emphasize that prolonged fasting isn't a cure-all. It doesn't work for every condition or every person, but it can help an awful lot of people with a wide variety of problems, and maybe you or someone you know will be one of them.